Hello people of YouTube and welcome back to Skull of the First Sin. We left off, we got to this bonfire in Huntsman's Copes. And now, we will Who talk to you? this man. I thought you'd have... You've sent me for the cheeky prey. I am... I've heard this. I joined you to the... I just... I yeah. You this is Cregan. Cregan of Mira. Another person from Mira. I'll find the couple. And you can get fist pump from him. If you're looking for the gestures, which are also required for an achievement. So, Cregan here is a requirement for Pate's uh, quest line. He and Pate both share a quest line, to be perfectly honest. Now, I'm going to go ahead and visit Strayed real quick. Now, I know it may seem weird that I'm going off and not continuing through Homesman's Coast, but we will. We'll continue through there here in a bit. But I just want to make a quick stop at Strayed and... See what kind of stuff I can get from Strayed at this point, with all of the souls and stuff I'm carrying. Well, very prepare to peer straight. And like I said before, he will in the last episode he will get Forlorn's armor. So here's the first piece of Forlorn's armor set. Uh, he also carries all kinds of magics and stuff, which I could finally get some more, some new pyromancies from him. I might do that. But I can also get a bunch of weapons and stuff from him. So. And like I said, I did want to show off as many of these weapons and stuff as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these while I'm here. Uh, the pursuer, with Pursuer's Soul, you can either get Pursuer's Great Sword or his Great Shield. Which, for my understanding, both can be useful. I personally am going to get the sword. Uh, flexing sen f Flexile Sentry, you can get uh, Warped Sword, the Art Sword, or the Barbed Club. All of these are somewhat powerful. Because uh, you have a Curved Sword, a Curved Great Sword, and a Hammer that has Bleed, which can be pretty helpful, actually. But the weapon I'm going to grab is I'm going to grab the Curved Greatsword. Uh, with the Soul of the Last Giant, you can get the Giant Stone Axe, which in and of itself is not too helpful. But that's in my opinion. Then you have Dragon Rider, which is the one soul that has the most items you can get from it. You can get the Halberd, a Twin Blade, a Bow, and their Shield. One thing I've never understood about these items is the Twin Blade. Simply put, there will be another time where we fight another Dragon Rider later in the game, which is why they have so many items. But none of them ever use a Twin Blade. Halberd? Yes. Bow? Yes. Shield? Yes. Never do they use a Twin Blade. And the Twin Blade is the one I'm going to grab, because I don't need the bow. Actually, I probably should have grabbed it, but I can get the bow later. And then Ruin Signals give us the heavy homing soul arrow. Feeble, do you really? Oh, shut up, Strayed. Quit being such a dick. And each of these items are good in their own right. I'll show them off at a later point in time. And then we're going to go back to the Undead Lockway, which is where we just, start, uh, just talked to Cregan. Now, talking to Cregan is required to do his and Pate's quest line. And something I actually didn't know when I learned from a friend who I got playing the Souls games, uh, Cregan can actually be summoned for the upcoming boss fight in this area. I never knew he could because I could never summon him. I always thought it was weird that he was in the area but was not summonable for the boss fight. But, like a lot of the NPC summons, aside from, uh, aside from Lucatiel and Benhart, um, most of the NPC summons that you can find, like the random ones, like, uh, the one we found a couple videos ago, Mr. Sell Sword Loot. 
um, they have a level cap or a level range that you have to be within in order to summon them. If you're over leveled or under leveled, you can't summon them. That goes for Kriegan as well, which is why I've never had him in this boss fight. And this may seem stupid again, however, I'm going back to Medulla. The reason I entered that cave, and for those who didn't uh, notice, the undead, the skeletons in that cave will respawn endlessly until the undead shaman magic user dude is killed. Until he's killed, they won't stop respawning. So, well, they, they don't respawn, but they revive. But the reason I came back is because I got this item right here. The magic mace. Which in and of itself doesn't do too much damage, and to be honest, the Craftsman Hammer is actually stronger. But Craftsman's Hammer, I believe, uses, uh, requires, uh, Twinkling Titanite, does it not? Yeah, so I, and I don't have much of that. Which is why I'm going to upgrade the Magic Hammer, or the Magic Mace, because I can upgrade it up to plus five. Now you might be wondering why am I upgrading yet another weapon, especially one that's not my main weapons. The fact of the matter is, the next boss that I'm about to take on has always given me trouble for one main reason. The boss is what I is what I personally call a horde boss, which there's one there's at least one or two in every Souls game. And they're my most hated bosses in the entire series. On but only because of one simple reason. The whole idea of the boss is not that the boss itself is strong, but that the boss itself outnumbers you. You already saw you already saw it once with uh, Ruin Set. How the boss was three different enemies all attacking you at once. And you had to try and deal with them. Well, they'll all attack at once if you jump down right away. But only one at a time. Or one one at t a time at first. And then two come after you after the first one's dead. Anyway, but... Uh, yeah, that boss is mild compared to some other bosses in the Soul series. That are what I call Horde bosses. In which... Instead of having multiple bosses themselves, multiple big bosses, you instead have one major boss with a bunch of small tiny minions around him. And this next boss is one such boss. Which is why it's one of my most hated bosses in the game itself. For those of you playing the original Dark Souls 2, Rowena would spawn around over here rather than up on top, and the uh, key would have been in that other lockway where I picked up the flame butterflies. Now, here's the thing. The boss beyond this point is uh, known as the Skeleton Lord's boss fight. And skeleton lords are just that. They're skeletons. Very powerful, very deadly skeletons. Now, I'll go ahead and explain while I'm in here. There are, starts out as just three skeletons. Which doesn't seem too bad until you start hitting them, kill one, and notice the health has only dropped by a little bit. What makes this boss challenging is that every time you kill one of these skeleton lords, a group of other skeletons will spawn. Which can make this boss difficult. And each of the different each and there's three skeleton types that they can spawn. And it and the ones that they spawn is dependent upon which one you kill first. Uh, or which one you kill in general. So the one that you killed will determine what skeleton type. 
So killing the one there that had like the halberd type weapon has caused these weak standard skeletons to spawn. Uh, the scythe wielder, if I remember correctly, uh, causes an army of slightly stronger armored skeletons to spawn. They aren't much stronger, but they are a tad bit stronger due to their uh, amount of armor. But if you notice how these enemies don't seem to be doing too much damage to me, that's because they're not. But they, but some of them can, especially if you get overflowed by a ton of these skeletons. Which is why it's a lot better to fight them one at a time. Now, the magic user, the one shooting flames, is the one that spawns one of the most annoying enemies from Dark Souls 1, though they've gotten a severe nerf in Dark Souls 2. Those being the Bone Wheel Skeletons. Bone Wheel Skeletons were the bane of people's existence in Dark Souls 1. Simply due to the fact that they used to be able to spin endlessly and break down your shield, even if you're held, holding a great shield up, they could break through it and kill you in seconds. In Dark Souls 2, they can't do that no more, but they're still quite annoying for being the fastest skeletons in this fight. Now, the Bone Wheel Skeletons, I've never seen them outside this boss fight in Dark Souls 2. So it's nice to see that they're only a one-time thing. Just like these Armored Skeletons. They're only a one-time enemy. And it's fun when the, when the main boss's spells actually hit these guys themselves. Now, an interesting thing about this fight is that every skeleton that they summon has a chance of dropping items. Such as a Falchion... Uh, Loring Skulls, this typical skeleton drops. Oh, I've never actually seen that one before. So you kill this guy, and all that's left now are a few uh, bone wheels. Another thing to note is that the number of skeletons that spawn when one of them is killed, when one of the main bosses is killed, is determined by what order they were killed in. So if I kill, killed the magic user first, uh, we would have had a ton of bone wheel guys. But the thing is, the reason I went and upgraded the mace is because skeletons are weak to strike damage, neutral to slash and uh, resistant to pierce. So using a mace is your best bet when facing this boss. Something like the Craftsman's Hammer, Morning Stars, or just a normal mace will do wonders on this boss. But since I've got decent amount of intelligence and faith, I went ahead and picked up that magic mace and went and upgraded it. And with that, we can now move on to the next area. So, we're actually done with Huntsman's Copes until we return to go kill the optional boss that I've avoided this, at this point. I have always hated these bridges. We run on through. Keep running, keep running. There's a ladder there that you can just ignore because you can climb down it, but you can't climb back up. And now we have Harvest Valley, and we have one of the one of the more useful merchants of the game. I, I never, but I must, this I lady never, is actually uh, the uh, daughter uh, of the blacksmith okay, over uh, that's already in Majula, but this lady is a I've, stone uh, merchant. I've searched, uh, perhaps we'll meet, perhaps we'll meet. and she will sell you. Titanite shards. She will also sell you other Titanite, other higher level Titanite shards and upgrading items, such as like 
uh, bolt stones, poison stones, and all that at a later point into the game. So you're going to want her in Majula for when you go to upgrade a bunch of weapons. She is very handy to have around. <sighs> but, so yeah. So now, we'll level up a little bit more. Uh, try to get my... I'm trying to get my strength and dexterity up to 20 each because of the fact that that's a good average range to use most of the weapons in the game. You can't use any of the real more specialty weapons, but you can use a decent amount of the weapons in this game with just 20 strength and 20 dexterity. So, now I could go talk to Strayed about the uh, Skeleton Lord Soul, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. In fact, I'm actually going to go pick someone else up and bring them to Medulla as well. In fact, if I'm correct, it's actually the last person you can bring to Majula. And they're the only one that I've yet to grab. So, now, to do this part, you need a Fragrant Branch of Yore. So, until you've grabbed one, you can't come back here and do this. Now, this area back here actually leads to one of the in the direction of one of the other primal bonfires. Which is why we haven't come this way yet. Have you business with me? The way you end up is all blown. Haven't. Oof. See that statue? Ah, hey. See that statue? Ah, hey. So we have Benhart. And yes, this man here is Benhart of Jugo. This is our other a uh, summonable quest guy. A very nice guy. And very powerful at that. In fact, if you bring him along all the way, you can actually summon him in the final boss fight. Which is what makes him really cool. And right here, we have Rosebeth. You have to talk to her a few times before she'll actually talk talk to you. Oh, I said, well, I said. And so she gives you a prism stone, even though she's good at pyromancy. Go figure. I was attacked. I, oh. Um, but do you, I'll take any, just. Now to get her to go to Majula, you have to give her some clothes, because her current clothes are ripped to shreds. So if there's any clothing or armor that you know you're never going to use, you can give it to her. So, for example, I picked this up from killing one of the rogues over in Huntsman's Cope, so I can give that to her. You have to give her one piece of each equipment type. So here we have the Prison Tatters, which is a very weak armor, but increases item discovery. So I might want to keep a hold of that. But then we have something like, say, you know, the Hollow Soldier armor that I don't need. You know, I can give that to her. In fact, I can even give her the Hollow Soldier Helm in it instead of the Rogue Hat. You know, I can give her Hollow Inventory Gloves. As well as Hollow Soldier Leggings. And now that she's got one of each piece, I can't get the, you can't get the equipment back from her. However, Thank upon you. doing this... After I change into the Hmm, but perhaps Medulla is my best chance. She, can, she will now go back to Medulla, and you have yourself your first Pyromancy Merchant. So if you're going for a Pyromancy playthrough, she's pretty uh, important. Clear the way. <laughs> no, no, no. Name's Bema. If we share it, I'll repay my... The road ahead's gonna... I... I said... I should... And so you can get joy from Benhart. I, I said... I should... And he agrees to help you since you opened the path uh, by getting Rosebeth unstatued. So, yes. So with that, we finished up Huntsman's Copes, killed a boss, got some random stuff done. 
and have unlocked our Pyromancy Merchant. So, yeah. So, in the next video, we will start working through Harvest Valley, which is our next major destination. Also, by spending enough souls at Malincha, she will give you the Silver Serpent Ring plus one, which gives you a more a higher soul bonus than the original. So now I'm going to get even more souls. So, yay. So, I hope you all had a good time, and I hope to see you all in the next video. So long.